could this be the best RPG of the year? We've just started 2024 and we've already had amazing RPGs drop like Persona 3 Reload, Grand Blue Fantasy Relink, and Infinite Wealth. The next big game on the horizon for RPG fans is the Megaton Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Recently, thanks to Square Enix, we were able to get our hands on the game and experience around four hours of playtime with all of the new and cool things that are coming in Rebirth. And with the game fully releasing at the end of the month, we wanted to give you our full impressions as well as a nice taste of what you can expect from this game. And you will be surprised by how much side content that you can actually do this time around and we're going to show you some of it here. We're only allowed to show up to 30 minutes and we have to voice over it, so we've tried our best to cut everything down to show off the new and good bits to all of you. The first thing that struck us during our initial hands-on was that Rebirth has a bigger sense of scale and discovery that wasn't present in Remake. Everything is bigger and there's so much to do, and this mirrors the original Final Fantasy VII where things started to open up after leaving Midgard. We always liked the more quirky and fun activities that you can do in Final Fantasy games, and it really does feel like the world building has been increased in this with all of the minigames in the Golden Saucer. When you layer this on top with the new activities and quests like sneaking through bases, playing card games, even finding summoning relics and more, there is a lot of mystery in the world. The demo we got to play took place in Calm and we experienced a main quest scenario and various side quest content. This eventually took us into the more open sandbox area of the grasslands. But let's jump into it and show you as we go through a bunch of the new things together with 2-6 joining us. So 2-6, because you're joining us and you do have a little bit more experience with Rebirth than me, I'm excited to ask you a few questions as we go through. This game is going to be a banger paradise. I can't wait. Remake was so much fun, and we're back at it again with Rebirth. And they've added a bunch of stuff. It's going to be bigger and better. They have. I'm actually really excited about all the expansion to the sort of first remake that we're going to see here. But we're starting here from chapter two, right? Yeah, we're starting here in like Calm, and we've basically getting introduced straight away to a car game that they're introduced. I never really played. The old card games like Triple Triad and the old Final Fantasy. So I'm excited to dive into this one, especially as someone that's got more into like Magic the Gathering and Pokemon trading card game. I mean, even a One Piece trading card game. This is super exciting for me. Queen's Blood. It's like Gwent. It is 100%. Like Gwent in some aspects and like Marvel Snap as well. If you've played any of those card games where you kind of have different rows that you need to outpoint the other opposition person in. Uh, it's very much in the same kind of vein as that, essentially. All right, and it and so that previous pop up was saying that there's going to be like NPCs around that you challenge. I'm guessing you win cards or something. Yeah, that's one of the most exciting parts. They're going to be like loads of NPCs around the world. There's one called Crybaby Ned just outside of this actual inn that we don't actually show in this video, and you face him and you get basically a card with an ability on it as well, which is pretty cool. Yeah, because these cards all look like sort of more basic ones, but they do have this grid. Th what? So what's this grid thing on them? So on the cards, it will display the adjacent grids that that card will give a point boost to. And the more points that you have on that particular slot on the grid, the more or the higher rank card that you can put down with a better abilities. Like, like you can see there, the Riot Trooper, in the top left, it's got like two uh, icons. If you put that down, you can essentially have a higher rank card there rather than us having a single one. So it's all about... Oh, and it's like a power cost. That So you're, yeah, you're juggling the cost. squares yeah. to get the right power and you want to line it up so that it matches the... Oh gosh, so yeah, you, you're, you place a card a to power up the adjacent. <laughs> then you place a card when it has enough power, which will also power up the adjacent. Yeah. So you've got to plan like a few steps ahead. So you can see that the enemies on the right hand side has like a spot with like three pawns there that you can place down. That means that you can place a three cost card there and that three cost card might have cover more of an area or have an ability that might change the dynamics of the actual map. But the whole thing is just having more coverage so that the number in the top left uh, on your side is higher than the one in the top right for the opposite player. And you have the three different rows, three different uh, numbers. And you can see there, I've got five, that one has three, a power. one. There you go. And it has a power. It has a power that boosts up the other cards are on top of it, is basically. So what you been doing? It's going to get sweaty. I mean, I'm excited to try it. What's this, though? You have? So we're out with Aerith, and we're just about to go on a date. And this is kind of like a relationship-building conversation. So they've added bonds, which is something that they kind of had in 
remake, but they kind of expanded sure. on it because there were a couple of scenes nice. that you could have with like either Era or Tifa, but now it seems like they're really like building on that. I'll go get the tickets. I'll meet you in front of the tower. Do we know if the bonds give uh, any like additional bonuses outside of potential story changes? Because if I think back to games like Dragon Age Origins, the bond with your party members would actually increase their stats at certain thresholds. So do, do we know I don't know. know. That, they or? haven't actually actually said that, but it definitely has like story implications on like what scenes you're going to see and stuff like that. So you want to be talking to everybody and making sure that you're seeing everything. If you are a completionist. Oh, you probably have to do multiple runs then to get like the, yeah. the different romance options. So this bookstore owner has like folios in it, which are basically like a grid of abilities that you can go through and kind of pick different ones from. And it looks like there's a lot per character as well. So it's super exciting that we can be able to build on top of the characters um, and the systems that we already had like in Remake. Obviously, the I think the levels are kind of reset in this one anyway. So it's not like you're going to have the same characters that you had from mm. Remake. So it's like a sphere grid, but maybe, at least from what we're seeing here, it's maybe less crazy. <laughs> like yeah. the sphere grid has like hundreds of things. I mean, we can see a few here. It makes me think of the re uh, the first remake that had the weapons and they had the circle, yeah. you know, notches that you would fill out. So it's, it looks somewhat similar, um, but it is a different system. So yeah, yeah. The we don't know how attacks. broad... We don't know how broad this actually like goes though, so it could get just as complex as like the other systems in the other games. But yeah, it, as you said, it's mostly focused on like synergy abilities from what I've seen and using like different magic with like out of cost. So they are going pretty ham with this in terms of like changing what you expect from a Final Fantasy game and that's as well. We I would say that's like a proper skill tree because it's giving you abilities and stats and other things. Yeah. But we know that we're still going to have materia on the weapon. Uh, as you can see on the, his actual sword there, you've got two green materia slotted in. So it's an, another kind of progression system. Yeah. This is definitely we, something that can be accessed like outside of the screen as well because there's little um vending machines that you can actually go access this in as well which i saw in the uh demo that i played right that's cool and is the skill points gained just through like leveling up or battling or do you, do you know how we gain these skill points i don't actually remember to be honest but i think it is just through like battling and leveling up and doing stuff and even books as well i think there's like little resources yeah. that you can get out in the world that uh like the you got level there, up your uh See, your folios action, right and we've got another vendor, the weapons vendor here. We do. If one progression system wasn't enough for you, you got number two, which is pretty cool. So like you were saying about the weapon upgrades and stuff like that, it looks like they've like built on built that out in a different way this time. I don't know if this changes the base system that we had in Remake or if it's additive to it, but it looks like we're going to be able to add on essentially like points and uh skills onto our actual weapon right so we have the skill tree that we just saw we have materia as we can see there the two green and now we have weapon skills which go on top which is things like that we can see here like plus five percent damage five percent damage is not bad as well i'm assuming that's yeah. like the first one you get so maybe there's going to be 10 20 plus percent on there too so that i you know if we're talking 10 or 20 percent in the future that's good damage increases no definitely and you can see you can like level it up many times in the bottom left hand corner as well because it's got a weapon level and then that's the auto upgrade system so that can just do it for you if you want to be a little lazy and not deal with it <laughs> the auto upgrade system was all right in the like in the last game but it was always better to kind of just min max it yourself and uh, get it going So the ah, and then back, we have obviously. gear as well. <laughs> yeah. Is that is that what that is? So yeah, you've got your like armband and other stuff. Now it's Final Fantasy being Final Fantasy. So this is Cloud and Aerith going on an actual like mini date. Tifa's not going to be too happy. I'm a That's Tifa man thing, myself. Um, no, Aerith, so... Aerith all the way. <laughs> 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 so yeah, you were talking about the bond system before. So I guess if you progress it far enough or if you do a certain number of side activities or quests then you can take her out on a date which is what this yeah. is and i'm guessing is it 
I mean, I'm, I'm assuming you don't know, but is it like an either or, or can you take both? Like, could we go on a date with Aerith and then a date? So with this Tifa? is more of a. I think this is more of a mainline story point. So it's the main scenario, but I'm guessing it will add up to stuff like this that you can see in the actual like uh, bond system. But this is part of the main scenario, and you'll see why in a second. Yeah, you can see the world is quite big from right up here as well. Yeah. The game still like, looks like good as well. Oh, there it is in the distance. Funny <laughs> how small it looks. It is far away. So, did something happen between you and Tifa? Oh, you, you got caught. He's not. He's not saying no. Not about you two, no. <laughs> Still, I can tell. I would have given anything to have a friend when I was growing up. Don't take her for granted. Wow. It all starts kicking off now. The world looks nice. Like the graphics, I, I think there are some areas that I've already spotted where it could be improved, but overall it's it's nice and immersive and I do actually like the style. Is it the art style that makes it look good? Or is it like the actual like graphical fidelity? I think it it's the good? art style, because like some textures like the walls and stuff aren't actually that good. But overall, like when you encompass everything on the screen and the character models, it actually looks decent. Decent, I feel like this looks wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so Shinra is just invading the town looking for they them. Have no <laughs> they have no chill. They have no chill. If you played the last game, you know why Shinra's like after them. Stuff and things had happened. So yeah. And so this this leads onto like an escape, right? Yeah, escape from the town, and then what happens when we leave here is that we actually go up into an open area, which is what they're really showcasing in this like demo really all the like side objectives and activities that you can actually do which is really really cool transmuter. so this is an item transmuter that you actually get like he just said and he he's explaining it better than me you'll get more use out of it than me But it's all about crafting up materials that you find in the world. So there's a lot of discoverables and things to pick up. The game feels like it's got a lot of content for us to do and things to discover around every corner, basically. A proper open world game. Mm, so there's actual crafting and gathering in this. With, yeah. And that's what this, tran was it Transmuter? Yeah. I hope that leads into like proper rare weapons and stuff. But as you can see here, it starts off with you crafting potions. Oh yeah, no, just like jump in. It says equipment, accessories, and more. So yeah, you can make. It's not just potions. It's everything. I'm, I'm assuming. Yeah. So you're gonna Which go. Which makes have me to find think those rare you... materials is gonna be yeah. sweaty. <laughs> you kill, kill some like side boss out in the world. It gives yeah. you a drop to make a really sweaty like equipment piece. That's pretty cool. And you can see your craftsmanship goes up. The more craftsmanship you, you got. You get XP and get like more um, recipes and stuff, which is pretty cool. Then we finally meet up with Barrett and Tifa, and then we go out into the grasslands, and we finally get to see Bill, which is the guy that picked us up at the end of uh, remake when we go when we left Midgar. He's a cool guy, and he's gonna tell us about the Chocobos, isn't he? Yeah. Anywho, what can I do you for? You in the market for some fine feathered friends by any chance? Are we ever? Need them to get through the swamp lands. Then you have come to the right place. Back in the day, we had Republic ferries to get us from A to B, but now they're nothing but driftwood, sadly. We got the next best thing, though chocobos. To them, a bottomless bog's no worse than a kiddie pool. Now, ladies. You're probably wondering, what gives these birds the power to glide across swamps with ease? Uh, 
Would you believe that their fluffy feathers give them the buoyancy to float while their limber legs can outrun a motorboat? Not even the dreaded Midgard Sormer, one of the fastest fiends around, can keep up with them. He's a top oh, salesman. Wow. <laughs> right, he's <laughs> the hard like, sale. Wow yeah, we're top gonna rent sale. them, Bill. We're gonna rent them. <laughs> Hello, I'll buy Picture them off of him. Limousine. So, can we rent some? Sure can. My grandson Billy's in the stable over yonder. He'll help you out. And next you go over, you meet his grandson, but then after you come out, you see your boy Chadley. Chadley's one of my favorite characters. He's back and he's gonna have the is he gonna have the, the synth battles or whatever they were and the, the battle simulator. Virtual you know, I spent so much time in there. I love him. But he's telling us about these towers, right? This is a new new system in this game because it is a bigger open world to explore. So what are these yeah, towers? Yeah, definitely. So these towers are like what you would expect from like a Zelda game where you're going around activating the towers or even like a Ubisoft game where you kind of go around and it kind of expands the world map and shows you all the activities in the area and you actually get to see how many activities they've actually put in and a variety of activities that they've put in. But Chanley is going to be collecting world intel around the place for us to do. And this is a Remna Wave tower. And what's this gadget? The Chad module. Allow me to accompany you. If you completed uh, the Battle Simulator missions in Remake, you'll know the true story of Chadley, which I won't spoil if you haven't, but yeah. Wow. Explains why he's out in the world now. Wow, the energy beams. Even they're extinguished. All right, let's see. So, yeah, let's see what these do. Resources. Oh, the map looks... The map looks kind of pretty. This is just a small area of one of the maps as well, because we've gone to, like, Juno on it as well, and this is just, like, the grassland. Seems like we saw that. Those are big interconnected areas, which is pretty cool. Yeah, did you get to see the overall size? Did you zoom out all the way when you were playing? Not just of this area. So, I know... I think they've said that it's all going to interconnect in the full game once you're going through like everything but just this m area i got to see right it said there that you get more data it will help crafting new materia and a few other things and we saw on the map it doesn't reveal the fog of war but it does show all the icons of what's in that area which yeah you know we've played we played all the games before like i'm thinking of like assassin's creed valhalla is a more recent one and you gotta run around and you gotta find everything and you know we're making videos on these things so it can take like tens of hours to, to find all the icons so it's cool that there's a system like this but it does very much remind me of tears of the kingdom because we just had that right and there was towers there that unlocked the map for you some people hate it as a design mechanic but i, just, I love it like i really enjoy collecting the towers in uh tears of the kingdom but how do you guys feel about it everybody watching <laughs> i love it do you happen to have any <laughs> I don't mind them, personally. But yeah, it'd be nice to know what people think. Oh, we got red 13. Um, so what's this? What's this area? So this is the battle simulator. You go through, you do your, like, battles. And usually it kind of really ratchets up the difficulty once you get to um, the end game content as well. Uh, I think they take away your he healing or something? Oh, you can't revive people. I think that's what it is. Right. So how are you finding Red? Red was good. He's got his vengeance mode, which is kind of like a, I think, take damage and kind of defensive mode. And then he comes back and does a lot of damage, which is pretty cool. I like the way that Red talks, though. I like his character, but I am waiting for to see, like, uh, uh, Kate Scythe as well. Oh, so we're That's actually it. in the open world now. So this is one of the open world activities that you can get and this is a live spring that seems to actually unlock more transmute recipes so you can be crafting even more stuff and you up up there you can actually see a bird that's very reminiscent of like ghost of Tsushima, where you followed the foxes to a pay, uh, point of interest and here you can see that he's scanning the point of interest to get the information on the live spring and there's a, a lovely little jingle as it ends 
Very good. Very good. <laughs> 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 All right. Yeah. So we're gonna be. You know, these are one of the many things to look out for. This one gives us more recipes and a bunch of crafting materials. It looked like as well. Yeah. I was able to locate an old Republic transmitter chip. This chip likely contains an exceptionally rare formula. I recommend searching for it. And you can see there on the map how many activities they've already done as well, which is pretty cool. And here we get to see and learn a bit more about the actual creatures in the world because there's things called battle intel that you complete. Um, and these are just like battle scenarios against particular creatures in the world. That's really cool, actually. A little bit of flavor. And if there's, if you're going to get that for, you know, multiple different things in every area, you could... That, that's the world building right there, you know? I, I like that. World building. It's, it's really good. In the top left, you can actually see the side goals for this actual battle intel that you're actually gathering here. And it's like, you have to pressure the enemy, you have to stagger the enemy, and defeat all enemies within the time limit. So, um, even if you fail, you can actually just instantly repeat it as well by just holding down triangle, which is pretty cool. But this is really cool. This is really cool. Do you know what this is, Paradise? It's the Titan Sanctuary Divine Intel 1. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a summon sanctuary, basically. And you go in here and you scan the sanctuary. It has a little mini game. And what this does is anytime that you want to go battle a, uh, a summon in Chadley's Battle Simulator, it will actually make them weaker and easier to beat so that you can get that easier. And it strengthens your material as well, your summon material. It, uh, you say strengthen summon material? I'm there. I'm there. Every, every <laughs> single one, I'm there. So it's another little mini game as well? Yeah, definitely. This one's going to be a bit spicy for people that, that have don't have good short-term memory. <laughs> You think you can do it? Well, I'm I'm good at games like Guitar Hero. It's got nothing on the screen when the buttons disappear. All right, so it's just, this one's an easy one. It's just four X's. But yeah, oh yeah, they're just gone. And I can see how complicated that will get if they've like added in multiple buttons, r r like rounds and stuff gonna get a bit spicy for people hopefully they have made it a bit complicated i'm gonna assume yeah the, the later game summons will probably start getting a bit nuts <laughs> analysis complete i managed to extract the necessary data from the crystal this should allow me to strengthen your materia A weird area though with all those cubes that's cool i like that stuff i kind of really liked it in final fantasy 16 where they kind of went into like the uh labyrinths and it was like completely different and more futuristic with like the fallen stuff so here we have like an outpost right and this is this is like a stealth mission which is something new yeah definitely it's nice to see that they've added different objectives in as well so it's not going there just like fighting things this is full metal gear solid now <laughs> Tactical espionage action. We're sneaking into a, like a bandit base to look for a proto relic, and you can see here that we have to take cover to not alert them, so that we can get the, them before like they make deals or get alerted or just run away. Basically, we finally caught up with them now, and we have like a little conversation with them, which is kind of funny. I thought you guys might want to see the side content and what you're going to be getting up to. The 
treasure for some cash so we can stop stealing and start fresh. <laughs> it's always been our dream to start a company and do all this work. <laughs> hey, we could throw him a bone. 2,000 gil. 3,000 gil? For what? <laughs> They didn't even negotiate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you have the option to say no as well, so... Yeah. Um, yeah, I wonder, like, what the different outcomes actually beat are. Beat them up. Business, baby. <laughs> they don't look like the honest type, though. <laughs> Be a buddy. Act as family. <laughs> Work as a servant. A servant. <laughs> Small business owner. Oh, you think they've turned over a new leaf? Who knows? Definitely not. I gotta know, there must be some implications of paying them. Maybe you meet them again and you pay them again, and then after so many visits, it gives you something <laughs> special. And that's the proto so is, relic. Yeah, this is the proto relic. And it's got some like really cool cutscene that you get to see that people. I'm just gonna let you guys take a little peek at this bad boy. Oh, I see multiple arms. Who's that, Paradise? Eyes of fire with purpose. Oh, yet a stripling. One who it looks like Gilgamesh. I mean, it's hard to know, but I don't know any other <laughs> character that has, you know, that's what it looks like that's, to me. That's got to be him, bro. <laughs> that's really cool <laughs> if he's in it. So this is towards the end of the demo. And uh, this is against the kind of big boss of the lake as we're proceeding into the next area that I didn't get to see. Um, but there's a really cool story bit that I know that you guys would have uh, get you, grip you back into the story of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, basically. And see so what just, just real quick, for. how was the difficulty on the boss or just the overall of what you played? It wasn't too bad. The thing that I had most difficulty with was just like going from like RPG to RPG. So I'm playing Relink. And the combat system is completely different from Rebirth, basically. Yeah. Cloud got grabbed. Cloud. No. How deep does that little <laughs> part of the swamp <laughs> go? <laughs> The whispers. Oh, the big sword. Who we know it's gonna be? He's back, the boy. We know the whole main thing of the story is chasing down Sephiroth as well for this one. So, hopefully, it features in both a positive and negative way because we know we get to play as him during some points mm. as well. The music every time Sephiroth comes around there. Calculated. <laughs> you one tapped him. Easy. <laughs> Cloud doesn't even know what to think. Come 
back here. How's he gonna get out though? The water's so deep. Wow, I'm I'm excited. I'm really excited. Right. Yeah, I'm very excited too. Um, the game's not too far away as well, so hopefully you guys enjoyed that. But we'll be back with more content for you guys soon.